one thing that I learned today. It feels, at least to me, the Heisman Trophy race feels so much clearer than it has. That it feels to me after today, it's Travis Hunter and it's Ashton Genty. And that doesn't mean that Jackson Dart can't enter the conversation. That doesn't mean that Jalen Milrow can make a better and stronger case for him. That does not mean that it is over. We still have football left to be played. But Travis Hunter had such a massive and impactful day on both sides of the football. I mean, kind of a pedestrian day by his standards offensively, five catches, 55 yards. But he had that rushing touchdown that was just ridiculous. Ridiculous. He had three tackles, a PPU, and an interception defensively. So he just continues to do remarkable things on both sides of the ball. And then Ashton Genty had another massive day. I think he had over 150 yards rushing, a couple of touchdowns, that an iffy day from Dylan Gabriel, and then the loss to Georgia Tech for Cam Ward just kind of makes it feel like those two, Ashton Genty and Travis Hunter, are now kind of operating in a league of their own in the Heisman race. I used to be anti-Travis Hunter for the Heisman because my reasoning mentally was that I felt like a defensive player who only plays some offensive snaps can't make a big of an impact on his team as a running back or a quarterback or a guy who plays every offensive snap. I'm an offensive guy. I have offensive bias. I'll admit it. That is out of my head now. Travis Hunter makes more of an impact than anybody in the country. It's over. Travis Hunter's win the Heisman. What he does as a wide receiver. And he's not just like running gadget plays at wide receiver. Like there's some defensive guys that then go play some gadget wide receiver plays, play like five, ten snaps on offense. Like, he he he's taking a lot of snaps on offense and the interceptions. He, he I mean, so many big time plays and the fact that he's playing 132 snaps he played against Utah. I mean, that is a remarkable number of plays. The durability. They, they always an old saying: the best avail the best ability is availability. I mean, he yeah. is available every single play for Colorado. When I used to hit 45 plays in the game, they would tap me out of the game, and he's playing 132. I mean, it is it is unbelievable how durable this dude is. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm squarely on the record. I will continue to be squarely on the record. He's going to be the – Hunter should win the Heisman. Uh, You're talking about somebody that mock drafts have him all over the place. It's the number one pick in the draft at the wide receiver position. Like, he's he is going to be the Heisman winner in my mind. And and this is what I always say to Ashton Genty supporters. I love what Ashton Genty does. We all do. And people say, well, we haven't seen anything like this since Barry Sanders. You're right. We haven't seen anything like Travis Hunter since – Ever. Like, that's just and, – and, and when when the answer is dot, 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 when you're talking about, to Adam's point, you're talking about the number of snaps, you're talking about the impact on both sides of the ball, you're talking about what he means. If he were to be to, – to sit out a game, because I don't want to even put the word injury in. If he were to sit out a game, Colorado would be losing their best defensive player and their best offensive player all in one human being. Like, that's just – that's a level of contribution that is beyond. So, yeah, I mean, I've been on this train for a minute, but it's squarely on it now. If I had a vote, uh, it would be a one-person vote, and it would be Travis Hunter. I called him college football Shohei Otani at the beginning of the season, and I got so much flack for that. Like I got really? roasted for that, and I don't know why. That's what he is. He is college football Shohei Otani. He plays both ways and does it so well. Like I like I, I, there's been so much hate and animosity toward that Colorado program. Enough. They're a good football team. There is a lot of talent on that team. That's a team that now has a very clear path to get into the college football playoff. That is a team that more than likely we will see in the Big 12 title game. Like this is a true playoff contender we're talking about this isn't just some you know annoying cute little story that you can just you know turn off on college game day and you're over it and you're over the pomp and circumstance no this is a fantastic football program football team and I think we have to give Deion Sanders so much credit from where it was when he took over where it was last season losing six consecutive games to end the season now at eight and two with a clear path to the playoff yeah, and Shadur Sanders has now been so consistent, which is, which was his question mark going into the season. You got to give Deion Sanders credit for getting his son to play at such a high level—340 yards and three touchdowns tonight, today. I mean, he was so good against Utah, and he's been just game after game after game has been the same dude. And we've criticized him early in this early in, in the season on this show for his demeanor, how he was as a leader. He's flipped that around completely, and. 
Colorado is playing complimentary football in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. They had the punt return for a touchdown on special teams today, so they can do it multiple different ways. Their defense has been great the last few weeks. They had a few pick, a few interceptions to, in today's game. I mean, all three phases, this Colorado team is playing elite. I mean, there, looks like they're going to play in the Big 12 championship game, and they got a chance now to be to get a first round bye. Which you talk about how I mean, just. Colorado is going to be bonkers uh, if Deion Sanders pulls the, the, this thing off. It'll be unbelievable. They also bonkers. don't get rattled. That's the only other thing I'd say. We've seen yeah. over the last month, like, this was a close game against Utah. They've been in some close games. They've been in situations where the whole world seems like they're against them. They've been in situations where they're negative down and distance. Nothing rattles this Colorado team. I, I, I think it's really impressive how focused they are within the game now. The, you, you've got a group of talented athletes that have come together. He's got them to gel. Yeah, I, I, the sky's the limit for Colorado. I, I, at this point, I'd be pretty surprised if they aren't the Big 12 champion. Yeah. I mean, they wow. fall last week, fall down 13 nothing in the first quarter against Texas Tech. No problem. No worries. We got there's tortillas flying. We'll just stuff them in our pants. We'll just keep going. No, uh, no, no, no BYU sweat. love for Fitz. No BYU love. You, all the BYU Colorado. love. Uh, all the BYU love for for yeah. Hey, look, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting thing to figure out what happens when BYU loses the conference championship game to no see doubt. if they still make the college football playoff.